Hey everyone, how you doing? Uh, okay, it's been quite a while since my last Game Editions video. Uh, I think it was back in November. Uh, reasons have been, what with Christmas, um, been a bit more picky on what I'm buying, not just buying anything. Uh, not too much out there to get, really, in my view. Anyhow, uh, quite a few Amstrad and Amiga games here. Uh, all old stuff, of course. And a couple of uh, cheap things from town I bought the other day. So, without further ado, the things from town first. Uh, from a shop that had uh, selling a load of games for a pound, so you know, I went and I come out with this Mr. Mosquito, quite a, an obscure sort of game. Uh, you play the mosquito, of course, as you can tell. And there's a family in a bunch of rooms, and you got to drink their blood basically. Uh, just upset them. I've, I've, got, I've loaded it up briefly and had a quick look at it, and it's a bit awkward at first getting used to it, but it could be quite fun. And the second game I was impressed with, and that's Call of Duty, World at War. Uh, set in the Second World War, so it's my era of first person shooters, ones I like. I do like the older stuff, sort of thing. I mean, Medal of Honor Frontline is probably still my favourite game, so. But, for a pound. And the final game, just for the Dreamcast, uh, I had no interest in getting this game really, but I thought I might as well get it. And that's uh, Trick Style. Uh, yeah, I haven't actually played this yet, so I don't know too much about it. It's kind of skateboarding-ish without the wheels, it looks like. But um, I was surprised when I bought this. So there's the disc for Trickstall. And in the back, there's a disc for Ready to Rumble Boxing. I've already got that game, unfortunately, but it's always nice to have a, a little added bonus. So two Dreamcast games for a pound. Uh, not a bad start, then. Okay, on with the Amstrad games first, and first of them then is the original Crazy Cars. Surprisingly, the screenshots on the back don't show an Amstrad one, which doesn't look too bad on the Amstrad. We've got a Spectrum MSX screenshot. Uh, this completes the Crazy Cars games for the Amstrad, actually, all three of them. So, Crazy Cars 1, Crazy Cars 2, and, well, sort of, Crazy Cars 3. Did a video of this some time ago now because Crazy Cars 3 on the Amstrad is extremely rare. So that was a nice completed collection. I was going to try and do it on the Amiga as well, actually. Uh, next up, then, I actually have the budget game of this anyway, but I can resist a big box Nemesis. Really nice box, actually. Uh, a couple of screens on the back show the Spectrum version, which actually is probably better than the Amstrad version. It's a dire game. Well, it's not a dire. It's a it's a poor game on the uh, Amstrad, unfortunately. Uh, Salamander. It's kind of sequel. Uh, it's even worse. Uh, yeah, it's obviously everyone knows Nemesis, Gradius, what you want to call it. Uh, it's a classic shooter. Obviously, still going strong. The most recent was like Gradius Five, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, the Amstrad version, unfortunately, it's kind of lacking. Uh, moving on then, uh, the final Amstrad game. This is a, a two games in one sort of thing. So uh, come it actually got released like this, also on like the Amiga and other systems too. So Double Dragon Three, which again on the Amstrad is a really poor version, really really poor. First two were okay, nothing amazing, but that isn't very good. This also comes boxed, all in one box, Rodland. Is uh, on the screen here. 
And Rodland is a really, really colourful, classic platformer. Uh, so cute you'll puke was the advertising for it. And uh, it's, um, it's great, I love it. I mean, I actually love the Amiga version. I want the Amiga version, because that is awesome. But the Amstrad version is all right. It's just a little bit slow. It's all right. So just uh, two cassettes and uh, instructions. Yeah, it actually come like this. Cut in the corner there, unfortunately. But other than that, pretty good. Uh, okay, I've got one game for the GX4000. The Amstrad GX4000. Uh, I've not picked one up for a while, because the only games that appeared on there are the ones I've already got. So finally another one then, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This takes me totally up to eight. And that's Barbarian 2. Uh original Barbarian is well known for being able to cut the opponent's head off, chop his head off. This one added to the original by you can run along the screens and you've got all kinds of different monsters to take on. Again, as the GX4000 carts were, stuck in the middle. Complete instructions. Uh, yeah, this was about fourteen pounds, so that's not too bad actually for a GX four thousand game. Uh, yeah. Okay, on with the Amiga games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Amiga games to show you then. And the first of them then is a really old school shooter. Uh, pretty hard to find. Comes on a cassette case. Jupiter Probe. Now Jupiter Probe is actually quite a decent vertical scrolling shooter. For its day, I mean, this is uh, what 1988, eight, no, 987, sorry, so really, really early days. Uh, really basic disc, and instructions are just on the inlay. Um, it's actually quite good, I actually quite like this game. Um, so, this might come up soon in my shooters series. Uh, next up, then, nothing to do with shooting at all, but I remember playing this back in the day, although I can't play chess, that's battle chess. There was a sequel, which was uh, Battle Chess 2 Chinese Chess, or something it's called. Uh, yeah, I can't play chess to save my life. Um, what this has, it does actually tell you inside how to play chess. Different kind of box. Never noticed that before. Well, in other games, I mean. Uh, yeah, so big instruction manual in there. It tells you how to play chess, actually, so that's quite handy. Uh, what this has is that it has battle sequences. Uh, your opponents can take each other's opponents out and, so, uh, and a bit of hack and slash involved you know you, you just watch it you don't actually do it um yeah i quite enjoyed it actually despite the fact i can't play chess it might inspire me to learn okay next up then is a racing game um you might have seen in the intro uh the intro to the game and that's moonshine racers um yeah i mean it's it's all got the game engine to Chose HQ on the Amiga, uh, which was pretty average on the Amiga. Nothing special about this game, to be honest. Uh, two discs and a manual. The Gremlin re-release label, GBH. Some screens at the bottom there. It does show a few other uh, games as well. Yeah, um, I just put a bid in a 99p bid or something on this and won it. So it's another game for the collection, really. But, um, that was a bit of a, a silly buy in a way, but yeah. Next up then, uh, this game I actually already have, but I have the budget game version of it. And now I have the big box version. Saint Dragon. That's the Kicks re-release. Uh, yeah, this is a really classic Amiga shooter, horizontal shooter. Screens on the back. Uh, yeah, quite nice artwork actually. Uh, it's pretty tough as well. And as with, I think, most versions, it does suffer a little bit of slowdown, only a little bit. Other than that, it's a really, uh, really good conversion. Um, I do have actually a uh, ST Dragon on the uh, Amstrad, and that literally comes to a standstill when there's more than like, one thing on the screen. But this, brilliant. Uh, next up then, I've finally got around to getting this game. Got the first, now I've got the sequel. Zenon 2 Mega Blast. Um, I'm not actually a fan of the Zenon games, but if I'm going to carry on my uh, series of shooters, it had to be done. Music by Bomb the Bass, which is probably more famous for. It's not the best, in my view, the best vertical sc uh, scrolling shooter. Uh, quite a few I've uh, over this. Two discs and a uh, manual. Yeah, um, I threw it over the original. I didn't like the original Zenon much, uh, to be honest, on the Amiga. But, that was uh, about £5, that wasn't too bad, it normally goes for a little bit more on that. 
two games left then, and first of them is Epic, a 3D space extravaganza. Um, yeah, Epic was a long time coming on Amiga, or any system for that matter, the ones it got released on. Uh, quite a lot in this box. Playing guide, although it's in a couple of languages. Three discs. Uh, a pretty large manual, which is pretty good, of course. And you get some 3D glasses for the 3D poster, which, well, it's not important, is it? I mean, this is just the um, the cover of the game. So, posters like that. Uh, I would put the glasses in front of the screen, but I don't think it'll work like that, to be honest. So, yeah, Epic was, what there was, was quite good. It was alright, it looks great when it's moving and that, stuff like that. But you could finish the game in under 10 minutes. That's uh, how easy it was. And there's actually a built-in cheat as well. So, a bit of a letdown, but I wanted the game again anyway, so... It sits in the collection. And the final game then is... Again, I've already got this on a budget version. You get the original, because the original was different to the budget re-release. And that's Project X, which is uh, playing in the background there. So the original version comes on four discs. It doesn't have the poster though. With the manual. And one of the things I've noticed actually, after playing it again after all these years, um, this level one of this is about 50% longer than the uh, the uh, remix version. Quite a difference. This is, uh, this is tougher. I mean, Project X is tough, even this version is tough. But this is uh, really hard. But I can't get to the fourth level, so I'm not complaining about value for money. Uh, so there you go. They are my games. Like I said, it's been a while coming. Finally there. Uh, yeah, I'll be here soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you again.